Hey there everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris Ormy and today we're back here playing some Starters Order 6 with our Start It mod save. Now we're in March, we're about a third of the way through the season, coming up to the beginning of April and uh, we've got a few races booked. Now we've got Peach Pipe, that's our three-year-old who will be running in an allowance race. Then I've got a bunch of two-year-olds running at five to six furlongs, depending. And also we've got Casting Queen who will be running in, I believe that's another allowance race, that's another three-year-old over a mile three. So a mile two and a mile three for our three-year-olds and five to six furlongs in allowance races slash handicap races for the two-year-olds. Belladonna is going to get a shot at a grade three, five furlong. So it's another chance to really develop a two-year-old, but there aren't that many races out there. There's a couple of two-year-olds I would have liked to have raced, but um, there's not too many of the correct distance right now. And there's a couple who actually want to run at a mile and maybe beyond as two-year-olds, which of course we can't do at this stage in the season. So seven races, we're just going to get straight into it. Up first is Blissful Retriever. So here we go, third favourite here, better ground stand side. Okay, well that's usually the outside if I'm correctly thinking about this. So I'm going to put under the preferred tactics, we're going to be preferring the outside of the course. So uh, we're not hugging the rail. Let's see if that actually does affect things. So. We're in good position, I think. This is a handicap, so yeah, there's no doubt that uh, French Applause will be the, the favourite and Halifax Flyer and then us and, you know, so on because the way things are, you know, the highest ratings are going to be the most favoured horses. But in a handicap, that counts for less than a normal race, so I'm I'm fairly comfortable with us in this race. It looks like a couple of people here may be a little warm. But uh, let them be agitated, let them be wound up, that's not our business. It is raining, okay, so the extra weight and muddy ground maybe, you know, that might hurt the favourites a bit more. So it's the blue with the pink star and the red with the sash. Halifax Flyer and French applause, we're off here on Bliss Blissful Retriever with a decent start. It looks like Halifax Flyers down there on the inside in the black cap. We're up into second place behind CPG with Ember just behind us and Wars Prospect now making a move up to try and get into third on that inside. Then it's Miles and Silver Screen with Andata, Nice Maidel, Grand Prayer and Halifax Flyer with French Applause are the two right at the back there with um, Grand Prayer in between them. So the two favourites look to be close as we're just edging out into first place now. Two and a half furlongs left to run. My list is trying to come round the outside. CPG and Ember now getting left behind as we start the power down the home stretch. One and a half furlongs. Here comes Halifax Flyer. Really charging up the rankings here. It looks like my list might have a little bit of a, a chance here going into the final few lengths but um yeah Halifax Flyer gonna eke out second place just ahead of my list the two stable mates there second and third but Blissful Retriever will pick up a handicap victory and I'm I'm very happy with that because handicaps are always a little bit of an interesting bag really we don't know kind of how that extra weight is going to affect some horses if there's some horses which are underrated of course they're going to be running really well and it looks like rushing winds might not be running at all if this is more than a week or two so rushing winds out for about three weeks now that's going to run us close but she might be okay for that race and if she's not okay for that race then we will remove her at that late date. But for now, we're going to keep booked in on that race. Up next is Return Voyage. 
on the 28th of March so let's go up here and find this race there we go return voyage another handicap race we are the highest rated the other three really aren't that good and uh, in fact the two worst horses are six and nine pounds overweight which is crazy and the six pound overweight is also agitated so us and broke the slump which the jockeys you know sorry the jockeys the bookies don't even fancy so we'll keep an eye out for the blue silks with the green sleeves but really this should be our race to lose and once again the rails have gone off i did check the courses yesterday and they were all working fine so i'll have to export once more but let's see them with four horses only in this race broke the slump there with a very late start no running a little towards the front there alongside waldmark in first place candy nanny dropping off into third and with a little under five furlongs left in this short race of course return voyage is right at the back of the pack so as long as we don't drop too far back and start making a move somewhere about now to get up in towards the lead we should be okay Let's see a kick on here from Return Voyage. Canny Nanny's going to come through now, taking second place. Walmart is out in the lead. Return Voyage is running well and has left has left enough time to really catch you as we come round this final turn. We're up into third. Pass broke the slump. We're around the outside of Canny Nanny into second and just two lengths behind Walmart. Tied now as we cross that first uh, that one furlong marker down the home stretch blowing away the competition absolutely nothing to worry about return voyage is gonna stream through to win in style so absolutely fantastic nice little win there again a little bit of a worry sometimes on those uh, handicaps but again we're booking good races for the horses and just keep picking up those wins keep taking over so we haven't been out to the places so far this season. Two seconds and a third. Everything else, the other 17 races have all been wins. Can we continue that? We're going to find out now with Secret of Mine. It's a Colt. Another two-year-old. Ran quite well so far. And will start as favourite. Top rated. And best record joint with Sir Cat who's just one rating point behind. This is a decent field. Two thirds, two seconds, and us and Sir Cat won our races. We're off to Delaware Park to see if we can continue this fantastic form. Six furlong dirt allowance race for two year olds. And there we go, we're on the outside. Decent little start, quarrel there up into first. Watch your excuse now moving out into the lead with lights out and we're going to go right to the front alongside those. Quarrels down into fourth with Cool Hand Luke and then Sir Cat right to the back in those yellow silks. Four furlongs to go. Secret of Mind still ahead by a short head. Here comes Watch Your Excuse up the inside to briefly take the lead here. But as we come round this final turn and on to the actual home stretch... I knew we wouldn't be far behind and we're ahead now by about a length, maybe lengthening out to a length and a half now, under two and a half furlongs. So cats still yet to make their move, quarreling lights out perhaps in the way a little bit. Watch your excuses getting left behind, one and a half furlongs, streaking of mine is absolutely powering down the home stretch. Sir Cat nowhere to be seen, Cool Hand Luke nowhere to be seen. Here comes Sir Cat, up the inside of Watch Your Excuse, might snag second place, but nowhere near Secret of Mine, and that continues a fantastic winning streak that we've got going on. So that should have been a fairly decent race for us, and it turned out to be just that. 18 out of 21 races have been won this season. And okay, King Mambo, a three-year-old that's won a grade one, 
and has won four out of ten races. The races they didn't win, fourth, third, fourth, second, fourth, third. So a decent horse in the company's been raced in. Grade one win, grade one third, grade one fourth. And that was over a mile, that was over a mile where we won, mile there, okay. Okay, King Mambo. Anything else interesting? No, nope, but King Mambo is interesting enough. So that's what we're going to go for. We're going to jump through the rest of this auction until we get there, of course. But uh, this is the kind of horse I'd like to bring in just to see how good it is. Because it's never been lower than fourth. And only two fourths, two thirds, and a second. You know, couple of wins. You know, four wins out of ten. That's a decent sort of strike rate. It's a young horse, and it's one grade one. So, it could be pretty decent. 2.4 is the uh, the reserve price. I think we might have to go a bit higher than that. 2.8 or 3.2 usually for this kind of horse so we'll see what actually uh what actually turns out to be the price but here we go king mambo let's get everybody else's bids out the way huge increases there we're already up to the 2.8 we're going past 3.2 okay 3.4 it will be and That's our horse. King Mambo. Any good? Pretty good. Not amazing, but pretty good. I'm fairly happy with that. Decent potential, good extra speed, a little bit of cruising burst as well. That's like 45 cruising burst, which is quite nice. Full consistency and finish application little bit of going adaptability as well so nice nice yeah maybe a mile one grade one mile one that could work out so king mambo welcome indeed to the stables next race will be up fairly soon in fact it'll be tomorrow in a f in the florida derby so hmm yeah that's uh that's an interesting one. That's an interesting one. The Florida Derby is a precursor race to the Kentucky Derby, so we'll see how we run there. Peach Pipe favorite, best horse in the field, top rated, top weighted, etc. We're off to Oakland to see if our three year olds can step up their game. It is going to be raining. Let's get straight into the race here with Peach Pipe on the inside. Not a great start, but leaps out of the gates there, second late, up into third. We got Bilboa just ahead, competing with Royal Courier for first place. Peach Pipe has slotted into third, now going to let Jungle Brew come up the outside and join that group. Together, Indy is in clear air with Sacred Romance and Red Sharp Humor in the rear of the field as we got seven and a half furlongs. We're up into second, just on the heels of the leader, Bilbao. I think this is a decent field, and carrying a little bit of extra weight might sort of uh, bring the others back into it. But so far, fairly pleased with the way we've been run so far. Six furlongs to go. Just about edging out into the lead now. And now letting Bilbao go back in front so that leads me to believe that this horse wants to run and is probably a better horse than Bilbao hopefully than the you know better than the rest of the field too here comes Royal Courier here comes Jungle Brew and up the inside together Indy will start getting in position we just move now into the lead by a length as we round the beginning of this turn the final turn, two and a half furlongs left in this race. 
You see now Bilbao is starting to drop back together in the making a little bit of a challenge here at the two furlong marker. And we're on to the home stretch now, one and a half furlongs. Here comes together in the making a little bit of headway here, trying to chase us down the home stretch, but it's one furlong and we're still ahead. Are we going to be able to do this, pull ahead even more? And just charge for the line. Peach Pipe is going to take this. Comfortable win in the end. Good run. Good win. And that is a decent little race indeed. So we do have another race. I was going to skip the day. But we have another race. We bought another horse. So where is he? There we go. King Mambo. So top rated is Questa and our little dreamer. Then it's King Mambo and Fear and Greed. And all four of those look to have very impressive resumes. In fact, all these horses have proven that they can win some good races. We've got two grade two winners. Everybody else has got at least one group one win. Let's have a look in the paddock. Nothing really there. And tipsters say our little dreamer ahead of fear and greed. So the bookies might uh, might be going off that. I don't know. I fancy us to get a top three finisher. Can we place again and keep our season record intact? Can we pick up a win and double the grade one wins for King Mambo? It's not a bad start. And he will charge out into the lead very early on here. Eight furlongs to go. And we're up at the front, lengthening just a little bit away from our little dreamer, one of the favourites. With Primo Hidden and Retriever Jewel in third and fourth. Fear and Greed then with Balin Hassig, Storybook Girl, Benny the Swinger and Questa at the rear of the field. So it looks like we've got one horse here, one favourite being ridden handy just behind us, chasing us as we lead out the way. Another one in the middle of the pack to do a little bit more of a later raid, I believe. Maybe coming into picture around the three and a half to two and a half furlong mark. But we've got four and a half left to run. Quest and Benny the Swing are still at the back with Bolling Hassig. Fear and Greed is still there with Storybook Girl just about in picture. Retriever Jewel now stand and make a move and here comes Primo Hidden. Up the outside as well. Our little dreamer content to stay in place right now. And King Mambo with three furlongs left to run is still out in first. In fact, is lengthening just a little as we come round this final turn. And here comes the field. But King Mambo is kicking on and gonna try and charge out for the line a little early. But here comes the field. Look at this. Six challengers right there. One furlong to go, and everybody is up together. We've just lost the lead here to Bolling Hassig. Are they going to take this race? Can King Mambo kick on and do anything inside this final half a furlong? It will not be. It will not be today. Fourth place for King Mambo. That's our lowest finish of the season so far. Benny the Swinger got up into third. Fear and Greed, one of the favourites, actually managed to finish second. But a great run from Balling Hassig. Oh. That's a shame. So yeah, fourth place. Faded. Got distance well. Hmm. May or may not be a good horse. I'm I'm certain it wants more than a mile, which is where it's won before. Maybe we push to a mile two and see what King Mambo can do. I'm not sure about that. But I still believe that's a decent horse and we should uh we should persevere and see where we get with it in the next race. Before making up our mind, we do have until when. Let's take a look here. 
I'm not sure exactly when in the schedule the Kentucky Derby does appear right now. So let's do it by King Mambo. And in April, there we go. So May 7th is actually uh, about a month away. So we could probably fit another race in for King Mambo before that comes around. Not too bad. Crest and Queen up next. Another three-year-old that could be running in that uh, that Kentucky Derby, of course. Now, this is the one cat handicap. So, oh, we're carrying extra weight. Oh, I didn't pay attention, did I? Okay, okay, but with a full stone lighter, so we're 10 pounds lighter when you take that four pound disadvantage in than the our Dark Knight who has yet to win. So we could be okay. We're carrying five pounds more than Sinister Minister, which might not be the best. But yeah, this might be between us and Sinister Minister, really. I think that might be the uh, the battle here for the win. So let's see how we get on. It's a decent start. We charge straight out to the lead. Sinister Minister here on the outside now will take that up as we cross the uh, cross in the, f the first furlong marker. Electric Chant at the back with Quality Art. Cresting Queen just ahead of those two. Guarib is there with our Dark Knight up into third. Nelson's Chief just in second and Sinister Minister leading out the way. So Cresting Queen is a late runner. Good start. Then drop back into the, the rear of the field. Just holding place. Sinister Minister is going to try and lead this one out though from the front and still pick up the win. I'm not sure that uh, that it's really got that in it, to be fair. Six and a half furlongs. Almost a full lap of this course to go. And we're coming now down onto the back stretch. Cresting Queen still in the rear of the field by about a length or two from Electric Chant. Then Quality Art and Guarri just ahead. A big gap then up to Nelson's Chief in third, who's a length behind our Dark Knight. And a length in front again is Sinister Minister. Four furlongs. This is where we need to make a move. Anybody that wants to win this race needs to be getting up now towards where that third place horse is. So we're making a move. I think it's a little bit late. It's a little bit late. I know we're trying to make up a lot of round on the outside of a turn. That's never a good thing. Inside two. And we come down to the home stretch now. One and a half furlongs. We're not out of this by any means. But we are being held up behind other horses. Not the best work by the jockey. And that's probably lost us this race. As we get shut off, we're probably going to come in third place there, just ahead of Sinister Minister. Quality Art and Electric Chant second and first. We should have won that race. Left it too late. And then kind of got caught up behind horses that we should have breezed past on the outside. So... Very disappointed to be over six lengths back there. Not happy, but that's a handicap race, I guess. That's a bad day on the horse. And let's skip through then until the day before this race and see are we going to be fit enough to race or not. I believe at this stage I'm hedging my bets towards pulling out of the race, so... Rushing winds looks okay right now. Little short of peak fitness. We could race. We could race and we should win. 
but I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to put a horse in short of fitness. So we'll go around the next week for the final race of the video and round things out here with Belladonna. And look at that. Rushing Winds actually picked up another injury and is out for another three weeks. So probably a good idea there not to run the horse. So Belladonna here will be running for this final race in the video ran quite well in the first race quite pleased to see how uh how that worked out and again same as the maiden the laid back trait comes into play we are favorite there rusty anchor just behind us both with bookies and tipsters we're very calm lean ready to go i like that so yeah, top rated, joint lowest weight. I think this is going to be a good race. Can't see anyone really competing with us here, except that we do like to run at six furlongs, and this is a five furlong. So there's not too much difference. I believe we should be okay. We're not the favorite, though. That is the rusty anchor, it looks like. So we will see how this plays on. So Rust Yanka there with the red cap, with the white silks, black sleeves, and red diamonds. Good little start for us. And we're going to drop back now into the middle of the pack alongside the Rust Yanka, just ahead, in fact, with Echoes in Eternity just to our outside, relentless at the rear of the field. Bold Tigress and should have had that second and third now battling for position on the inside of Lida Akente. Two and a half furlongs and we're starting to make our move here. And you can see we're going to come round the outside here on the turn. Two furlongs left. Bold Tigress leads out the way from should have had that. But it's Belladonna here running well as we come up to the one furlong marker and on the home stretch we will take the lead and start driving up for the line rusty anchor not gonna have anything to say with this echoes an eternity running really well will get second place but belladonna picks up a grade three race and that's another graded race as a two-year-old for our stable which is always a good thing absolutely delighted to see that so 25 races 20 wins fourth is the lowest we've had and that was a horse we bought not bred so i feel really happy with the development both in and out of the stables on the track in the breeding barn and um yeah so far quite nice to see peach pipe winning races Kristen queen a little bit dodgy so is wild retriever um king bambo there's question marks there but could turn out to be a good horse so those are our four three-year-olds that might be running in the Triple Crown races. I'm still not convinced any of those four would be favourites to win all three. So there's a lot of work there to do in the next video to try and figure out exactly what our plan is for the Kentucky Derby, the Preakness Stakes and the Belmont Stakes. But yeah, I'm, I'm not too sure. Maybe World Retriever or Peach Pipe, they're in good form. They might have a chance at all three. But really, I think we're probably favourites for two out of the three rather than actually sweeping. Sweet Treat's not bad. We need to see more from the two-year-olds. I'm thoroughly impressed. Of course, Dangerous Mind's the only horse not to have won every race they've been in. We've got, of course, that grade three now on Belladonna to go with Green Peaches and Trader Vic's grade threes. So I'm really excited to see how these guys look in the new game when we're actually going to transfer them in at the end of this season as three-year-olds. Not sure if we're going to take any of the three-year-olds or four-year-olds that we've currently got, but these two-year-olds, we're really going to be testing them this season and then import as a three-year-old and just see if we can get a triple crown winner in that first season of the uh, the new save fully updated so yeah i hope you enjoyed this look at the horses and the races today 
I think we're in great position and uh, the next video or two should be really really interesting to see who steps up for those triple crown races then then I've been Chris Army. thanks very much for watching guys if you have enjoyed leave a thumbs up subscribe if you already haven't to get all the latest um, you know videos on the channel I do have a giveaway going on for Franchise Hockey Manager 3 if you like management games, sport games uh, ice hockey you know enter that competition there'll be a link in the description and or comments and on Twitter at Chris Army. follow me there uh, retweet the tweet and then there's a Gleam.io um, competition so it's so various sort of ways you can gain entries to it so I highly encourage you to do that but I'll see you guys next time for some more Starters Order 6 as we kick on for the Triple Crown this season and look if we've got any potentials for next year. Till then guys, I'm Chris Holmey, take care of yourselves.